Good evening. Good evening. Did we miss our cue? Gosh, Pika, what the? We're trying to run a semi-professional, you know, amateur uh, YouTube show of love and, and gratitude for comic books. Hi, everyone. Happy Wednesday. It is new comic book day here at the Comics Talk with Reverend Sully, your tactical and practical dojo for spirituality. Ha! You learn your katas. Wax on, wax off. Wax philosophical and spiritual. And uh, that's what we do here. And we also talk about comic books a lot. It's Wednesday. It's new release day. That means it's time to go to our local comic book shops, our LCSs. You know, the funny book bodega, the independent bookstores, the mom and pop brick and mortar shops that the staff work in and you go and get your, your funny books, your floppies that usually for me, they come in these ubiquitous brown paper bags. Sometimes they also use these flat plastic bags with like ads on it, especially when they say free comic book day is the first Saturday in May. And we are one month away from new comic book day. That's right. We will do a new comic book day extravaganza. We'll go to two comic book shops and try to get as many free comic books as we can. True. And uh, maybe three. Who do, Will it be live? No, no, no. I just mean that would be interesting, though. I mean, let us I would have to shoot that on the iPhone. Like, you know, I would have to, like, invest in a selfie stick or maybe a harness or or, or a noggin cam. Maybe get Pika, like, you know, get, get like a tether for him and a noggin cam. How would that be? Or maybe I just paint a drone up to, to, in his colors, you know. But how many new funny books are available today for solicitation? What we usually do is we go to the League of Comic Book, the League of Comic Geeks dot com slash comics slash new hyphen comics slash. That is the address on your browser. That's the URL, the Universal Resource Locator, your HTTP, your Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and the HTML, the Hypertext Markup Language, the code that makes the matrix here in Internet land. <laughs> I love words, and I love funny books, and I love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the show, especially through the dreaded incel cast, <laughs> what is that show about? The incel cast show is about gratitude and blessings. It is. And it's also about shaking off stupid internet shit, too. I mean, people are downright cruel on social media. And uh, it's easy when you're not in arm's reach. It really is. And... Um, there's an old famous, uh, I'm O'Sullivan, hello, Irish Catholic raised, but I'm a Hindu and I'm an ordained minister of independent faith. And I just celebrated my 26th anniversary back on Easter Sunday. That wasn't that cool. Um, and uh, <laughs> where was I going with that? Just the dog just ran through the field. He'll be back. He knows where to get supper. <laughs> Interesting. And how many funny books do we have today available at our local comic book shops that were solicited? Let's see. I go to leagueofcomicgeeks.com. First, I rig them. And well, why don't we just share the screen? Let's present. In Animal Kingdom, they call it present. And that's called lordosis. It's when you say to, to, to the missus, assume the position. Oh boy, that's what incel cast is all about. It's about uh, it's about love. <laughs> it's about being called an incel on fucking social media because you don't like Disney Star Wars or you don't like New Doctor O or you don't like the like the the the, the desperate neediness of trying to like force change into nerd pop culture spaces. I mean, I'm all for the authenticity of what that really means and the, the you know I, I cringe at the term forced diversity though i really that's like a cringy 
kind of thing. It, it's weird because it's like, you know, um, we're not that kind of show. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Incel cast is more of that kind of show where I get provocative on purpose to get you to tune in. It's clickbait. And, and it all boils down to gratitude lists and blessings that come with it. It is. And it's baseball season. Um, it's April. It's, time's marching on. It's going to be summer very soon. That means it's time to start going to conventions. And um, let's just count them up. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen rows of eight. Stop shouting for the thirteen eight. That's a hundred and four plus five. That's a hundred and nine. Different titles solicited this week, and as we like to do. Now let's blow it up a bit. Oops. Let's uh, blow this up to like, yeah, that's, that's better. Let's see, is it? And now the ads come out. Britney Spears, the woman in me. It's just the woman in me to do anything. And I love and I over and over and over again. What do I do? I'm just. How do I know all that? <laughs> I grew up in the seventies, man. I was a kid. My aunties. I was raised by women. That wasn't Barbara fucking Streisand, man. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> she's Josh Brolin's stepmom. It's true. James Brolin married Barbara Streisand a long time ago. Yeah, that's cute. Let's see. We've got anything? Because we look at the bottom of the list just to see if, like, is there anything here that we missed that we'd be interested in? Because we're a comic book show. We talk about comic books. We talk about floppies. You know. Like these paper publications. Okay, let's just, you know. We talk about comic books. You know, they, they're 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 flimsy in a way. They're like, that's great. This is a variant cover, by the way. You know, they're on paper. They're they can be damaged very easily. They're they're allergic to fire. Ask ask me again, Dan Slot. Uh, I kind of cringe at that just a little bit. But it's more of like, hey, that was. That really was defiance. But yeah, these are my funny books. These are some funny books, recent ones, you know, and they're, they're paper. They have a staple on the binding. You can see that, right? Not looking for, we're not looking for dings. We're looking at the staples, you know? There they are. They're precious little things, man. And, and they're, getting, they're getting pricier and pricier. And your speculator market really is that you know that that that's for me that's like a mini game you know I, I don't really do much with the um, with the I'm sorry I'm looking at different things right now sorry on my on my uh, panels here I'm like you can hear me clicking away. Like, a, but yeah, let's go back. Let's see, there's Titan the Ultraman number three from Advent Comics, four ninety nine, and uh, doesn't show you. It doesn't say how many pages it got. It's got one variant cover. It's uh, Tony Kittrell and Nitho Diaz and Thiago Gomez. So, is this like one of those comic books that are like just look entirely digital that you say got like shipped out to? Brazil. I mean, is that fair to presume because of just by reading the credits? You know, I'm still thinking about Barbara Streisand. <laughs> she was really fucking hot in the day, man. Dude, she inspired all these dramatic girls to like, you know, to sing at the top of their lungs. Damn. And that's, and then such baguette, like 
Madonna and Lady Gaga and all down the line. It all started with Barbara. It really did. Oh, you know I'm a sucker for a, a zero issue. This is Homeland number zero. And uh, the series chronicles the adventure of bra the brave men and women of America's covert Homeland project. Let's see. And Tony Kittrell again. Okay, so he's got, you know, he's got two. He's over the Tony's one of the bullpen writers at Advent Comics. Hey, look, a busty gal. And it's uh, patriotic. And uh, it's about America. That's good. You know what I mean? You have the mystery man, uh, the leader, the, the busty woman, the fiery hothead, the, the strong man, probably the um, the traitor, and uh, maybe, and, uh, well, our, our, our black friend. You know what I mean? Is he, I mean, is there, is there a great, is there, is there more fair representation here? You know, is, is somebody... Somebody has to be, you know, we've got seven people here. Three of them have to be Latino. That's America. Dude, ain't that ain't that America? You and me, that's true. You know what I mean? Write that shit down. <laughs> Go for it, man. This should be like, we, we, everyone on that team should be able to speak Spanish. I think everyone in America should be able to speak Spanish. That's just me, though. I think that, like, you know, knowing other languages, being able to read and write and communicate ideas, like I'm always thinking to like my friends, the uh, the independent comic book crowdfunders. I'm like, do you have a Spanish version of this to sell it in the Spanish market? And why not? If the answer is no, what the heck are you thinking of? What are you relaxing on? Get a good. Okay, let me see some lettering. Let me see some Spanish. Let me like share this with my Spanish friends. And be like, okay, this joke didn't fly. What you meant to say was this. Shit like that, man. You know, I mean, there is a huge Spanish market out there. Everything from the Rio Grande down to Tierra del Fuego is a Spanish-speaking Latino culture. Even Brazil, who speak Portuguese, that is still a Latino culture. And what they share is a huge market. They, they make movies, books, television shows of robust. Where do you think Shakira came from? I'm out tonight because my hips don't lie and I'm starting to feel it right Oh, oh, oh <laughs> I love Shakira. God, she's beautiful. I think she's got feet like a hamster, but maybe I could, I could, uh, I could let that pass in this case. This case. <laughs> we love the ladies here. We really do love the ladies here at this channel. You have no idea. Let's see. But that was Homeland number one. There's Lady Liar number 60 from Line Webtoon. I mean, cool. I mean, just, yeah. I mean, just, yeah. Oh, wow. Advent. So this is probably the one time of the month that Advent Comics is soliciting because, that you know, they, they probably, they're not able to release weekly. There's Capable number two. Um, I've never even heard of Advent Comics. See, I should be, I, I want to be taking chances on stuff that we consider indie but then you know i have like a series of gates i'm we are gatekeepers are we not are we not gatekeepers in a way that like you know everyone has standards from dating to comic books i mean you have to have some like somewhere to be like you know I just, I don't think I'm going to, it's about time and it's about resource and it's about, you know, you only have so much time in your lives. It's like, why do you want to, you know, fill it with things that you would ne necessarily never choose to, you know, I don't know. Just, it's just, that's like a minefield. Just like some progressive person wants to come in here and tell me a thing or two about me because like, you know, they find like this or that, the other thing problematic because i'm not a wholesale agreeing with all their new all the tenants i'm a bit of a traditional dude where did that come from it doesn't matter i am krishna's flute murali krishna has a flute lord krishna he loves to play the flute he's darn good at it the flute's name is murali it's a simple piece of wood with holes in it krishna puts his lips to this flute and he exhales 
and he makes little notes. And I am Krishna's flute. That's all I am. Namaste. <laughs> we have spirituality here. We have lots of it. So let's start with <clears throat> what's on tap today. The big books at the top of the list. Uh, leading off the pack, you got Batman 146 at 499. This is something that I lost all the lead in my pencil for. I got no wick in my stick for this. Uh, it's called Dark Prisons. It's the culmination of Zurinar's plans. Reveal Dark Prisons by Chip Zdarsky. And Jorge Jimenez continues. The, the explosive Dark Prisons continues as Batman learns from an old mentor what Zur's plans are for Gotham City and the world. Can the Dark Knight escape from a prison designed by the ultimate version of himself? And what nefarious role does the Joker play in all of this? Hmm. Seeing that we've seen the absolute power solicits for the for the for the event, I get no anticipation. There's no surprises in this. There are no stakes in this. Um, you know, there's. Um, Yeah, and yep, and Katie Kubert is the editor. That's right. Ben Abernathy might be wrap, wrapping it up on the the, the rest because I saw that last week's Batman Brave in the Bowl number eleven was still group editor Ben Abernathy. So that's like maybe the, those these are like the last of his projects that are being printed and released. And so yeah, how many we got f six covers all day? <clears throat> Incentive covers. Dan panosian has been ripping it up on, on 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 oh wow look a Jim Lee variant cover come on wow this is what Jim Lee does all day on his YouTube station he'll tell you he knows how to draw a horse that's the Batman of um, of Gotham by Gaslight. It's nice. Batman, iconic character. Ah, uh, see? This damn Pinosian one would be great if it wasn't for all the fucking the screen tone dots. You know, just... I don't know. It's just I think that stuff is... It's just... You know, but look at the line art, though, in the background, in this damn Pinosian page. I mean, of the... The, the smokestacks... And the water towers of Gotham City, and it's like it looks like an older version of Go the Gotham City, or is this like, was it the West End where it was Selena is, where it's like, where I would be? Seriously, I grew up in South Boston, in South Boston, Massachusetts, which is a neighborhood of Boston. See, downtown Boston is nice, got buildings and restaurants and clubs, but then come the the immediate neighborhoods, which are still in the city of Boston. You can also think like Manhattan. And then you have your boroughs, but still Manhattan is like, has its neighborhoods. Chelsea, eh, formerly Hell's Kitchen, uh, you know, the Lower East Side, the Upper the Upper West Side, and, you know, you know, Chinatown, like, you know, all these like, you know, <clears throat> different parts of this. Uh, I wonder if LA is like that. I want to visit LA one day. I, apparently, I've got a huge amount of, of internet friends in LA that I could definitely make plans with i would love to see a movie with robert meyer burnett and chris gore and and, and polly from latino slant and aaron sparrow you know and just like that that's five people right there maybe like you can come down for the day you know if it was on a monday or a tuesday that you know wouldn't that be cool have like a mini meetup we do mini meetups here in boston there's always cool. We always have a great time. I hope. <laughs> I haven't heard anything negative. And there's never been any meltdowns. This is X Men 33 by Jerry Duggan. And it's not, uh, no, Joshua Kassara is doing the art. Thank goodness, because I was getting a little tired of that Phil Notto art. And I love Phil Notto. I don't, it hurts my feelings to say that. And um, I just, I, I don't. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, wasn't feeling it, 
but I've always understood that Nato, you know, he has his strengths. Everyone's got their strengths and weaknesses. And um, I just, yeah, but X-Men Assemble. There's only two more issues of this left to everything. So um, well, in Wolverine's case, it's four because he's going bi-weekly. It's the only buy I've heard about Wolverine going. Seriously. But I'm bumped. That's a joke. <clears throat> it's a joke, you know, a joke for adults. A joke. That's from Bad Santa. <laughs> With John Ritter. <laughs> and just like, excuse me? Then they no, that's a joke. <laughs> just then the the elf, you know, the, the the short guy. I think he passed away. Um yeah, so it's coming to a head like a like a like a good zit. Um, oh, Laura Namaro. See, that's a nice smile. That's great. I like that because that means, like, you know, hey, you know, see, look, look, Clinton Clowes. Everyone's got a smile here, kind of, kind of, except for you know, you, you might like, you know, it's for the camera, but still, it's like, you know, that's great. Oh, wow, look at all these. Look at all these. Oh, look at this storm variant cover. Now, see, I would get this if it was on the shelf. I love this. I love storm. You know, I love storm. I've got, I've got, there's a, I think there's a, a spinner rack has four sides. And I think a, one, I have to re, I really have to redo my entire spinner rack because my X Men are just, they're bulging out of their, 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 their two to three. There's three, the X Men have one side of my, spin, of, of a four sided spinner rack in, in my, that's true. And I've got a, just a few of these newer issues. But I would get this just for the for, for the cover art and to put on my spinner rack. And to be like, okay, here are, I got two issues of Jerry Duggan's endgame of of um oh this is great. See, I like this. You know what I mean? This is fun. Because I like the, the 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 thing on the top, because that's supposed to be like to appeal to a uh to to a fan my age. Oh, I'll get this. So how many, how many? Variants we have all day. We've got three down here. We've got un, you know that so one's a foil and one's not foil. That's the difference between those two. And then there's the the, the regular Phoenix. These are dark Phoenix, by the way. Dark Phoenix is in red. Regular Phoenix is in green. Then there's also the white Phoenix of the of the white hot room that Genie's also been as well. Um really good those are uh, just just want to say like again another one um that's based on the trading cards seriously this is based on the trading card and the storm as well love it see it's got the masterworks thing to it this is, this is great yeah see this is that's great Oh, that's supposed to be a vampire. Oh gosh, that's so that's like a harbinger for probably blood hunt. But yeah, this is great. Oh wow, Russell Dutterman. I'm loving this storm. I would love to get this one. Maybe I'll ask my my store. Ask your store, and if you don't have a comic a local comic book shop around you, then try Yule Carter. Of fantastic comics of Berkeley, California. His deets are in the details. He is my eighth comic book shop. There are seven comic book shops around this fortress of solitude that's within striking distance. I have a local that's in my town square that I've been going to for the better part of two decades. I also have. And the rest of the six are available by public transportation in varying degrees. And they all have varying, diff like every comic book shop, they all have different back bins and things to offer, different walls and different staffs, you know, and, uh, and different flavors and different curations. I mean, like, they have the hub in Union Square, Somerville. You have Comicopia in, in, in Kenmore Square, uh, Fenway, Bo uh, Boston, and down in Boston. And they're so curated and they're so of their own flavor of, of like an indie, you know, and foreigns and just, this is why these are independent bookstores. And then you have, 
New England Comics, our only chain in Massachusetts, and which have contracted over the past few years. You know, they're down to four stores and only two of them in the Boston area, Malden and Quincy, of which counted my six. And then there's Yule Carter's Fantastic Comics of Berkeley, California, of whom I shop with often. And um, because he, you know, he's out in Berkeley, California. I'm here in Boston, Massachusetts. There's a whole continent and country that separate us. But from the Bay to the to the Haba, we are connected in the spirit of comic books and this culture. And a friendship, too. You know, we, we hang out on... Um, at Wes, and I love his show, and he tunes in often to our show here. He is our part of our show, and uh, thank you. So, yeah, get some comic books. Maybe Yule might have one of these. Yule, if you have X Men 33, that storm cover, I'm gonna hit you up. I'll call you. <laughs> awesome, Poison Ivy number four. I gotta say, 20. This is Poison Ivy 21. Um, by G. Willow Wilson and uh, art, artist Marcio Takara. Um, I've been really entertained with this so far. Uh, this is they're doing a a Poison Ivy Year Zero here, an origin story because you know it's about Pamela Isley and what led up to the life changing. Well, dare I say, life ending? Pa Dr. Pamela Isley's life basically ends as a human when she changes into the being that we know is poison ivy whether she's an anti-hero now or um ecological terrorist and villain of, of the years gone by you know she you know this is actually a really good book. I'm enjoying this. It's a bat title. And like, we always, you know, there's always like this, you know, like, oh, girls in comics, girls in comics. Girls have always been in comics. Women have always been in comics. Producing, writing, drawing, editing, you know what I mean? And that's just, and G. Willow Wilson's doing the yeoman's work here over on Poison Ivy. It's been entertaining. I like it. And, um, I've liked it for, for, for several months now. This is, this is it's a decent book. So um, put that in your pipe and smoke it. We should be mentioning G. Willow Wilson's Poison Ivy every time we mention, you know, our, our failings, you know, our, our, our feelings, our feelings, not our failings, our feelings about certain writers writing certain things marketed to certain markets. We have the Immortal Thor number nine, uh be wonderful art wonderful art but i'm just it's so um it's so over my head the story i'm like um i'm just yeah i'm kind of I, I like looking at the pretty pictures this is pretty much I, i'm trying to follow this and yeah it's not doing it but look here's like yeah it's got to be some blood hunt stuff once again we have this bronze age mock-up with with the marvel comics group banner that is the you know that is going to um that's indicative of the bronze age marvel books that marvel comics group makes some kind of um car backing up <laughs> next door <laughs> and um well, it's about the appropriate time you know 4 30 on a wednesday you know to coming home from work after a hard day's work as a contractor and um <laughs> yeah but like the immortal thor i mean like here we have how many this is thor number nine and we have this is a one in 50 wonderful the cheesecake that's enchantress um Great. She's the big bad of this. We have some Nick Bradshaw. This is some connecting art, I guess. Something else. We got Sit Lady Sif behind Thor. And that's Jane uh, Foster Valkyrie. And um and Loki. In modern Loki right there. 
And there's our Bronze Age tribute at Davila. That's good. I like that one better. Adventures into Fear. Was that in the last one? Have I been looking at that the entire time? Adventures into Fear with the Immortal Thor. I, get, I really like that. Yeah, I, I like that cover a lot. There we go. <laughs> but we have one, two, three, four, five covers for Legacy number 770. 28 pages, four ninety nine. So you're getting 20 pages of story and art. Oh, yeah, we forgot. Venom uh, 32, um, Torrin Groenbeck. It's, I'm enjoying it. Uh, this is Symb Symbiosis Necrosis Part 3. And um, it's got, wow, two, five. Nine, ten covers all day. <laughs> Dude, yeah, we got ten covers. Ain't that... Ain't, oh, wow. Yeah, look, supporting all these symbiotes. and I can't keep up with all that stuff. I really can't. Avengers 12... Tony in his new armor debut. It looks like Tony's debuting his new armor in Avengers because that's, you know, you've got three variant covers. Let's look at this. This is vampire inspired, bronze agey, you know, trade dress. The fall of X comes for Earth's mightiest heroes. Jed McKay. Yeah. Hmm. I wish I've read the entire thing. Shouldn't it have could shouldn't you could you have snuck some Fall of X trade dress? Oh, there it is. Fall of the House of X. Okay, it got the trade. I was okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Because that's what it's made for to be like that thinks that's an official tie-in issue. There you go. You need this. And how are you going to file it? Are you like, are you going to file this with the Avengers comic books in your long box? Is that going between 11 and 13? Or are you putting this after Fall of the House of X number three in your, do you have like a personal curation of the story itself in floppy format? I used to do that all the time with the, um, with the, crossovers that i loved like you know uh you know crisis on infinite earths infinite crisis final crisis you get in the you know this like mi midlife crisis those were my issues now ha 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 no thank you but uh avengers is kind of a uh it's it's decent it's a decent story yeah i'm not reading void rivals unless it's in the um the pirate chest, which is interesting because I'm reading the rest and I'm committed to the rest of the Energon universe. This is Void Rivals number eight, and it's an ongoing. It's by Jonathan Hickman and Robert Kirkham himself. Um, I just wasn't really sold on. Wow, this has four variant covers. I was just never really sold on the art. And let's zoom down and see how many solicits it's got in the future. It's solicited up to issue 10. Does it say final issue? Secret of the Sacred Ring Revealed. Void Rivals finally puts the Energon in their corner of the Energon universe. It doesn't say it's the final issue, but who could it be? Who could it be now? <laughs> This is the man come to take me away. See, now looking at it like this, it's kind of like, you know, like, oh, what if you're reading this on a tablet? What if you're doing the the, the podcast and you don't even care what we're looking at? Why does he keep talking about variant art when he's on a podcast? No, this is listed as a podcast, too. This is Charles Soule. Yep. Oh, here we go. Once again, you know I have a weakness 
for these blister pack mock-ups. I love these covers. And look, I love the fonts of Star Wars. Like, you know, I, I love the look of this. This is great. You know, ah, Nubian. I love Watto as a character. I mean, like, like you're always talking about the negative stereotypes of, of, of the Gungans and and the Nemoidians in the pre the prequels. Who's mentioning Watto? Who is Watto supposed to be? I mean, I mean, is it you know, is there a negative? Can can we put a negative spin on Watto for fuck's sake for modernity? Why isn't anyone using Watto as leverage to try to shut one of you incel fans up? <laughs> ah, nobody else is a T60 motivator. What are you waving your hand around like you're some kind of Jedi? My intrigues don't work on me. Only money. I love Watto, but Canonically, though, it is in here. It it is in here. It's in the story. It's in the novelizations that Watto beat Anakin. He did. He had to. It was his slave. He had to. You know that was the. You know, but Anakin knew he would get a weapon from Watto. I think there's a canonical story out there too in the in uh, one of the Star Wars comic books where. Maybe does Vader have Watto stuffed or something in his castle in Mustafar? What is the name of Castle Mustafar? Oh, that's really nice. John Tyler Christopher Webster. This is a negative wash vintage variant. I love a good Boba Fett. I always wanted to get a uh, an, Amer an Empire Strikes Back era Boba Fett. To accompany Frozen and Han, uh, Frozen and Carbonite, Han Solo. There, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. I would love there to be better Star Wars. Star Wars, this is it's okay. Now that's unfair. I mean, you have a, a, a well, is it? I mean, you have a Thrawn Alliances mini going on right now, and then you have Thrawn on the cover over here. I don't know. You're just trying to sucker somebody. I can feel it. So you get two Thrawn covers. So it's so a Star Wars number five is six covers. I like the cover here. Because you know, you see the stormtrooper, you see Han. No, you see, you see the yeah. I mean this as the Star Wars image goes. It's pretty cool. This could have been on best. See, now you could be like, okay, I mean, what's this story is going to be a flashback to when the Empire got to Bespin before Han and Leia and the Falcon? You know, wouldn't that be? Yeah. I wonder, you know, I'll, I'm, I'll look at it. I, I All I want are good Star Wars stories. All right. It seems just really difficult to do. And then you can apply that to your superhero stories as well. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, why is it so hard to do? To, to you know, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, superhero. Keep it simple, Star Wars. Keep it simple, Sully. Keep it simple, silly. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. That's what the old thing is. But, you know, we just, we cleaned it up a bit, okay? Now, I'm not saying I'm going to be on, say, the, you know, Jolene, but <laughs> Birds of Prey number eight. I um, I enjoy this book for the most part. I've enjoyed um, the majority of these issues. I really have. Like, um, I take this on an on a on an issue by issue basis. I know it's kind of like it's quote unquote not made for me, but also it's like it's Bird of Prey, and Gail Simone fucking wrote Birds of Prey twenty five years ago. She invented it, and um, it was really good back then. So once again, it's like you have a writer with an intermittent history. I mean, I'm really not familiar with Ms. Thompson's work at Marvel. Um, especially on the X titles. Um, all I know is the buzz 
from my buddies and uh, and fellow comics aficionados. But um, I just like I'm just taking this on face value and like, but like look 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 look, look cheesecake. It's anime ish. Like, what do you think of Black Canary's new outfit? She's got the Canary logo, you know, in the traditional, you know, chest area where a traditional superhero logo would go. This is a redesign. They've kept her fishnet stockings. And um, I, I, it's, you know, and, 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 and she's got her leather jacket, which is nice. And... Uh, She's always had exposed arms, yeah. Because I'm always like, I didn't like the design of the last Catwoman arm, uh, uh, the last Catwoman suit because she had exposed armpits, and I always thought that would be a a target for a sniper or a close in knife. And they're 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 much smarter melee fighters than to to, to not have that area armored up. Or is that just to the you know that's just part of the comic book conversation. Sometimes we have this over seriousness of like, you know, of thinking way too hard about something. Am I thinking way too hard about Selena's armpits? I could be. That's between me and Selena, okay? <laughs> but again, I mean, I'm like I'm like I love Big Barda, okay? I, I've had a I love Big Barda. I've always loved Dinah and um Mary McCabe. And um, that's Batgirl, Batgirl, Cassandra Kane. And that's where you know when you have non delusional parasocial friends when you, you know, you refer to them by, you know, their proper name. Wow, this is a Jim Lee cover. A Big Barda. I would get this just for the cover. I love Big Barda. Wow. So Jim Lee's doing covers this month. Scott Williams inking him? I can't see the maker's mark from here. It doesn't look like Scott Williams is inking. I'm not sure. Am I wrong about that? <laughs> oh, yeah, and Harley. This is the last thing you see before you black before you wake up in in, in Iron Heights. Something like that. <laughs> Thank you for looking at some variant covers with me. This has been fun. Uh, I love art and I love these female characters. These are strong, they invented strong, stunning, and brave. Oh, they oh, and look, Barbara's in the background. That's cute. And um, I'm not buying it. No, I'm sorry. Um, it's a good question. I'm always saying it. If it's good enough, go back and buy it. I read I read a lot of things in my digital pirate chest. Such as this, Doctor Strange, Jed McKay, beautiful Alex Ross covers. Alex Ross is doing covers for Captain America, for uh, for Thor, for Doctor Strange, uh, for for Avenger. No, Alex Ross is doing Avengers Twilight. Um, but still, it's like, and oh, and Pascal Ferry is returning. See, I like Pascal Ferry's artwork. Always have. So this is, you know. But I'm not too key on the story. I did buy one. I did a couple of issues ago. It was um, for the Peach Momoko cover. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I had my I have my weaknesses. Um, Shazam now being written by Josie Campbell. Mark Wade and Dan Mora have moved on. And uh, so this is the, I believe, Emanuela Lupacino did the interior arts for Mark Wade's uh, World's Finest Teen Titans, and which was pretty good. It's got this like Mike Allred kind of feel. And you, know, you got Josie Campbell, and we're supposed to always say something about the side hair, hair shave, because uh, it's, you know, you know, that's, that's it's a telltale sign of... Of where this story is going to go. Let's look at 12 real quick. Yep, Josie Campbell still. So she'll be on at least an arc. And I wonder if 
the focus will change onto Mary Marvel because Josie Campbell recently did a Mary Marvel miniseries. Vengeance of Moon Knight. People are looking forward to this. Um, Jed McKay, once again. Yeah, he, he, gets a, gets, he writes a lot. This is his month, right? He's writing Doctor Strange. He's writing Avengers. He's writing Moon Knight. He's been writing Moon Knight. You know, and those are three solid, you know, he's, I think Jed McKay is slowly over, you know, he's got his space there. You know what I mean? Who's bad? Who do you feel is the best in Marvel's bullpen? Come on. I know we bust balls. We say mean things. We, we we're critical. We give feedback, but who is, what's the pecking order? Like, look at me in my baseball shit here. Who's the pecking order? Who's, look at me in my baseball shit here. It's, it's, you know, I'm a Boston Red Sox fan. Like, you know, <laughs> I love the Red Sox. Um, love going to baseball games, but like you're pitching rotation. I've always seen, I, I, I've always been more comfortable, like, you know, saying uh, there's a the whole thing like, oh, comics needs more rock stars. No, we don't. Look what you did to your rock stars. Look what you did to Warren Ellis. Okay. Cam Stewart and Ed Piscor, no, those were not rock stars. You know what I mean? Those were those were creeps. <laughs> there are, but it's just like you know, Rob Liefeld. It was a he was a rock star too. The image, dude. And um, no, I feel that comics are more equatable too as a better allegory. Not the rock star. No, it's a baseball team because on a baseball team you can have a free agent. You can have that A list superstar. You know, so there's room for that rock star kind of role, but it's all a team. If it's not just the writer, it's the artist, it's the anchor, it's the colorist, it's the letterer, it's the editor, it's the publisher, it's the printer, and it's the distribution, and it's the store. It's a big team. You know what I mean? So, um, but when it comes to the writers, who are your favorite? How would your Marvel writers, just Marvel right now, 2024, I mean... Your pitching order. You have a pitching rotation. You have like the starters. Who are your starting pitchers? And then you have middle relief, and you have, you know, uh, the relief pitcher, the, the closer. You know, <clears throat> who gets saves? You know, <laughs> oh gosh, isn't there anything in the more in the world more thrilling in the ninth inning when you have to send the closer out and things get dramatic? You know, oh gosh. Good stuff. I love baseball. But so I equate comics to baseball. I'm trying to sell you on this notion that it's where it's healthier to look at comics through the lens of baseball than the lens of the, the rock star and rock and roll music. Everyone has their role, you know, everyone's part of the team. And we all play for the same team. And eventually, sometimes you get traded and you go to another team, you know. You go from Marvel to DC, but we're not talking about DC. I'm talking about look at Marvel's bullpen. And once you assemble it in your mind, you're the coach. And this is your starting rotation. Who are your starters? Jed McKay might be my my opening day starter, my 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 my, uh, my number one. He's not my ace, but you should have your ace be number one. Maybe he is my ace. Maybe he's the one I have the most hope in his potential as, you know, um, like, like Jerry Duggan, he would be like, what, you know, like third in rotation? What do you, maybe, maybe second, you know, for, a, he's going to give up base hits. He's going to give up, you know, he's going to give up runs. But overall, I mean, for me personally, he's got more wins than losses. So you need a pitchers that, pit, you need pitchers that can pitch. So what's your, What's your Marvel pecking order like? You know, but so I've been very impressed with Jed McKay, like of, of all the writers that come down the line in Marvel Comics. You know, I, you know I'd have Greg Pak and and, and and Alyssa Wong. I would you know, just maybe ask for a trade. <laughs> oh, yay. 
but yeah, so Moon Knight is very popular. I really like the last issue the most. Gunslinger Spawn, I'm not reading, but look at this art. It looks like an old, it looks like a, a movie poster. Actually, this looks like a book, an old paperback book, which is also kind of like a movie poster too. <laughs> let's see, let's get back to action. Captain America number eight by jo uh, John Michael J. Michael Straczynski. Um, Captain America has the tools and the will to protect the front door cabaret and its strange guardian Lyra from the or is it Lyra from the onslaught of a fate worse than death. Now he just needs the strategy, but sometimes good strategy requires sacrifices to be made. Legacy five says seven fifty eight. Four ninety nine for twenty pages. Story and art, and um, once again we have the we have. Well, you see, here's the gimmicks. Yeah, this is just like I feel like this is all like, like the Marvel Comics group stuff. You know, the play on the Tomb of Dracula. It's a vamp. It's vampire related, but not in Halloween. No, because we're leading up to the Blood Hunt Marvel event. Jed McKay, Pepe Larraz. So, like, are our Marvel event this year? I mean, seriously, look. Like, hey, like, what was it? Twenty twelve. Who was the ace of the bullpen? Was it Matt Fraction? And didn't he do Fear of uh, Fear itself? Marvel Fear itself. Of which I hated, but it's 2011. Yeah, I was close. Cool, but a fear it's I, I you know I like the whole action figure like the, the action figure toy box thing of of um oh have I not had the right thing? Oh, you've been looking at my ugly face. And we're supposed to be looking at. Sorry, you've been shouting that from from the from the from the live chat, haven't you? So yeah, so see, we got the Marvel Comics group. Um. Captain America, the tomb of Captain America here is supposed to look like Tomb of Dracula. So, uh, but that's a uh, the Bronze Age mock-up there. Okay, again, this is well, more Copper Age, late Copper Age. Um, this is the Marvel Masterworks bubblegum card. It's not it in itself; it's new art, but it's um, it's done in that style. I think if if you can prove me wrong, prove me wrong. And be like, no, no, that was an actual card, a bubblegum card, and a pack of cards. I don't think bubblegum came with it, but you know, <laughs> I mean, those those were pretty hot for a long time. But I just, I've had my, I've struggled with this version of Captain America uh, from 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 issue one, and I like J. Michael Straczynski's writing historically. It's just this one is just not for me. Uh, Sensational She Hulk number seven by Rainbow Rowell. And um, this is like cutesy ootsy. Um, oh, look, let's look at the, the vampire variant. See, done in the style of the Bronze Age. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's romance, it's, it's a romance comic with. A superhero skin. The romance, com romance comics have always been part of the comic book industry, really. And um, because girls do read comics, girls do buy comics. We're talking kids, you know, kids to teen, preteens, uh, tweebs, whatever the hell you call them now. Um, you know, shit. I was buying comic books all throughout high school, you know, and I kind of petered off. After high school, you know, when I started, you know, and um, and I got it, but I always like we were in and out of comic book shops. Like, geez, like Newberry Comics was like this fulcrum of Newberry. You might know Newberry Comics as, as a brand and as a store. It's it's all kitsch stuff. It's all Funkos and T-shirts and graphic novels and book. You know, it used to and, and sometimes like, you know, records and CDs. But it used to be a bona fide comic book shop, especially the Newbury Street mother mothership location, and um, 
there was a Harvard Square store too. And um, yeah, I mean, just Newbury Comics was, I was always in and out of Newbury Comics because I was always buying music. And, and they had European stuff too, like magazines, comics, like the, the sexy stuff, the Milo Manara, and the 2000 AD. And if it wasn't that, it was definitely Tower Records, a block up the street, that had that kind of material too. You go in looking for music, but I'd always end up by the spinner rack in Tower Records in Boston, Massachusetts, on the corner of Newbury and Mass Ave, right there near Berkeley College of Music. Great neighborhood. Great place. Yeah. Deadpool number one. Who's writing this? Cody Ziegler, who, who is an improvement over Alyssa Q Wong. I couldn't even, it doesn't matter if Alyssa had had blocked me on Twitter for no apparent reason except for her own, you know, group list blocks and use of them. Oh, this is an issue one. You gotta get back to that. How many variants? Wow. Six, eight, ten. 16, 19, 20 different variant covers for Deadpool. No, this Deadpool. Number. What is this like? Deadpool volume 13, number one? You know, I, I know Cody Ziegler from, um, from Miles Morales, Spider-Man, and Spider-Punk. So, I don't know. Maybe he it might work because Deadpool's the the Merc with the mouth. Let's see. Let, let's see what uh what Cody Ziegler's got. I'll give it a chance. Yeah, sure. That's what we're here for. We got Image Comics Geiger number one on Ghost Machine. It's the series premiere. It all starts here. It's Gary Frank and Jeff Johns. And um, is this a reprint of the Substack stuff, or is this actually? new new stuff let me know if you know people are really want to get behind this let's see this see this is an issue one all right so ghost machine number one was was really ghost machine number zero i don't that's my that's my opinion but they only have got three covers you know ivan rice and there's an, a, a one in 50 foil of that cover. And then there's a, a, a blank variant. This is says, that says cover B, cover C. Oh, that's cover C. Okay. That's right. There you go. No, I'm not picking up on this. No, I just, no. I'd rather pick up something else. Like, like a something beneath the tree something behind the you know the <laughs> figure that one out blue beetle number eight sacrificers number seven this is what i'm talking about and there is a balin ortega variant cover hopefully i'll be offered that at my lcs this is on my pull list and um the new story arc i'm not even going to read the blurb I don't want to spoil myself on anything. I don't. I want to know what happens as it happens in this book, page by page, and get my um, get my money's worth, get my experience worth out of this. Comic books, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we have Red Coat number one. We also have Rook Exodus. So we have the Ghost Machine books starting today. There'll be three Ghost Machine offerings. Grim number 16 from Boom Studios by Stephanie Phillips. Hmm. You have Spider-Man, Shadow of the Green Goblin, $4.99. J.M. Mateus. Um, Norman was not the first Goblin. What? <laughs> He's not the original Goblin. The secrets of the Proto Goblin. Proto Goblin. Proto Goblin. Proto Goblin. Proto Goblin. Proto Goblin. We got two, four, 
five, six, seven variant covers, eight covers all day for the issue one of a written for the trade paperback. You know, basically glorified point zero issues, Marvel point one issues, something like that, right? And um, what else we got to this? What else we got this? Oh, Neil before Zod number four of 12. I'm in. Um, it's been good. It's been over the top. It's good to see some over the top and really mean bad guys, especially in conventional superhero comic book fair and like DC comics. Like, hey, you want to save space for some absolute destruction? Try General Zod. You know him. He's Superman's natural born nemesis. Check out this. And it's really interesting art. Good story beats. Good camera work, I feel. And uh, for overall, yeah, so this has been really, really fulfilling for me as a, as a comic book fan. It's Neil before Zod. And um, as I said, it's on my pull list. That's his kid, Lorazad, who is uh, the other half of Peter Tomasi's um, Sinister Sons. Is that it? Uh, <laughs> that actually that says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> I like the coloring on it too. It's a bit outrageous. It's a bit like, you know, but it look look at the background. You have to get super like this is the thing about artists. You have to get super, you know, creative and you have to like just come up with this. Like look at that eyeball alien right there. Isn't that wonderful? Just like I this is the, this is art. This is sci-fi. I mean, this is so classic. Look at him. He's like a he's like an <laughs> He's like a bad knight, you know what I mean? And, and he, is he evil or is he just, is he a pastiche for conservative people? I don't know. We got Aliens, Black, White, and Blood, number three. Who's doing this one? This is in an anthology. We got Colin Kelly and Jack, Jackson Lansing. There, they have a, um, an, the, like, I would call it the, the spine of the series. Okay, it's going four issues. Uh, and it's written for the... So they'll, they'll have... Let's just look at that real quick. It doesn't even have... Oh, it is, oh there it is. Yeah, so you, uh, Landing and Kelly's Utopia is the spine of this. It's the... And the rest are anthology style. That's a really good cover, though. Because it has the green of the alien blood. That's always been the color of xenomorph blood. That 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 neon green. So having red and that neon green, it's you know, it's just when they use that neon green as as as, as coloring, like as in light source kind of, and it's just like that's unnecessary because it betrays the black and white quality of it. It's supposed to be black and white with a dash of color for for effect and affect as well. Remember, this the the, uh, the difference between effect and affect. Affect is the result, and affect is something at like like um, like a cane. And I don't need to use a cane. Why do I have a cane or an accent? I use it for effect, for you know, with an intent outside of its usefulness for show, for presentation. Superman 78, really good book of Robert Vendetti. Um, I mean, this is six of six. This is over. Superman versus Metallo. Metallo. It's an interesting spin on Metallo, um, the Superman villain set in the in the Superman 1978 universe. Yeah, it's only going six issues. Um, yeah, it's officially Earth 7, 8, 9. Maybe 6 was afraid of it. Why was 6 afraid of 7? 
Because seven, eight, nine. Wah, 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 wah. You funny. We got three variant. We got three covers for this all day. Two variant covers, and um, yeah, I, it's really niche and nostalgic and aimed at people like me of my age. So. But, it, you know, it's nice. It's a good Superman story, if you're into that. We've got the Batman Scooby-Doo Mysteries number four. Um, which is DC Comics publishing a floppy at $2.99. And it's 32 pages listed here. You see that? Usually a $3.99, 28-pager, a $4.99, 28-pager, which is only 20 pages of art and story, okay, and um, now we have re reality here in a way. It's like we all get out of here. Shoo! No variant covers. I mean, we we had we we got the last issue of this to just to play with to look at, and we saw that all the ads are just like. Y A targeted stuff. So it looks like it's a great model on like, hey, why isn't this like your stock your standard stock comic book? And I just well, because the marketplace has changed and you know, and it had a really good interpretation of the Batman property and of the Scooby Doo property. And it's like it's 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 as if it's the the Batman of the 1966 Adam West, which was the Batman that had I no no it was the Super Friends Batman I believe. Oh gosh, I am you know Batman and Scooby Doo have teamed up in animation in the 70s, and I think it was the Adam West Batman, not the Ulan Sule Batman of the Super Friends. But yeah, that was a good. I, I was really, you know, in, written by Sholy Fitch, art by M Megan Huang. Uh, I see. Oh, look at these smiles! Beautiful. You know what I mean? Just like even Marie Javins. It's just that the power of like losing the smirk. I mean, like you know, we had to be hospitable and welcome people into our spaces and want them to spend our money here and their time with us. And they're going to go back to their lives and they're going to come back to us for their time of respite. Last Mermaid number two is out. All right, I'll pick this up because I picked up one. Unique dimensions. See, it doesn't. It didn't. That that's great. It doesn't say you know it's format like comic book. Uh, it does have unique dimensions. It's a square. <laughs> it's a little bit thicker. I mean, it's a little you know longer. A little, but it's, it's shorter. But it's a it's a square. And uh, I'll pick this up. Let's see what else is out today. Power Rangers Academy. We're starting to get into. Let's see. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles source book. Interesting. Uh, well, I got Janet on there, so I'm not interested. I'm so sorry. Oh, <laughs> does that make me a bad fan? Oh, look, Scooby Doo, where are you? 127 for 2 99, 32 pages. And um, look, that is the, yeah, I mean, that is the um, the most classic look of Scooby Doo you can get. I mean, that's not Mindy Kaling's Velma. You can take a break from all your worry and all your anger and outrage at. Mindy Kaling's Velma. You can choose not to look at it. Let it die on the on the vine. Oh, here we go. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Saturday Adventures. Because you demanded it. Mona Lisa returns. Cool. See an authentic female turtle with an in theme name like Mona Lisa. I've also heard of Venus too, who was uh, who was a turtle, and you know that like Venus de Milo. You know that. You know, what the fuck does Janica have to do with art? 
It's got nothing to do with anything. It's just for just, it's somebody's character that they fleshed out literally into a Ninja Turtle from the age old convention of the blood transfusion, the life saving blood transfusion. One of the turtles being like, I know I shouldn't do this, but I have to save Janica's life. And then she mutates. She mutates into a Ninja Turtle. Why couldn't she have chosen a new, like a Ninja Turtle name? I don't, you know, to go along with it. Like I would say Shelley, as in Mary, Mary Shelley, the, the author of the first science fiction book, you know, Frankenstein, Mary Shelley. Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> Heroes in a half shell, turtle power. And look, that that's that's April O'Neil. That is not a race swapped April O'Neil. There's no argument here. You know what I mean? Look, they got you know that the Bende dot filters. You know what? Fuck it. I don't care here because it's like cartoony and shit. $6.99. It's a one shot. Um, I might pick this up. It's a, it's the April special. Now that's cool. See, this is celebrating. You know, April O'Neil, TV reporter with a camera, you know, risk taking, brave, stunning, brave, bold. That was April O'Neil from the from the get go. Ah, uh, power pack into the storm number four. Um, Yusagi Ojimbo, the crow number one. It's great that you know Stan Sakai is just cranking these out. Hmm. We got Red Sonia from Dynamite Empire of the Damned. Now, this is Dynamite. Um, they have their market share because of all of the variant covers. I mean, oh my goodness, is Rachel Holton? Wow. Gosh. That's a beautiful woman. This is cheesecake, and that this is, oh wow, it's what <laughs> that's art though. Wow, I don't know, but the whole I think the whole women tongues and photography has been played out. It's almost, it's almost lewd. I like the, his look at the, the their dice on the table. And there's a monopoly board. Look at this. this is, I like art. I mean, and this is this is great. I mean, <laughs> that's Red Sonia. I like her as a character a lot, but I'm just like, oh wow, that's really great. I like the use of the negative space behind her. It's interesting. It's done in the, the done in kind of a um, It's absence of line, it's absence of art, absence of paint. I mean, only her flesh tones have been colored, like only her human. So, though, every I guess this is supposed to be like this is the human behind Sonia is evident here, and everything else is artificial, and you know. This is the eyes of the warrior herself. Yeah, I like art. I love art. Don't you? Ah, now look, girls. I mean, look at that. Wow, look at all these variant covers, though. Holy shit. Three, six, nine, twelve, fourteen. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Written by Steve Niles? For real? Okay, now you have my attention. I love Steve Niles. He's a great horror writer. Uh, I got to meet him uh, at 2015 Fan Expo. No, it was Boston Comic Con back then. And I was just walked up to him, and I was just, I didn't have no, nothing. I was just like, hi, you're Steve Niles? He's like, yeah. Like, thank you. I just wanted to come up to you and say thank you for all the books, all your stories. I love them. And uh, it's just, that, that was about it. You know, a couple of minutes, but... I love going to these conventions and just saying something like that to one of my creators, one of the creators I love, and I love to see their stuff. Like I, I had that same experience with Lenel Yu a couple of uh, uh, last year at um, at um, 
fan exp I had a wicked comic con in April of last year. All right, what else we have here? Hack slash kill your idols. Hmm. We're nearing the bottom of the list, and uh, we can get back to our. We can get back to our Wednesday. We've taken our break together. Hey, an Archie comic. I'll never buy an Archie comic ever again. But isn't that a great comic? Look at that. That's a, that's a nice Archie comics kind of cover. Hmm. Sorry, Archie. Wow, Xenoscope. Keen Spot, Can I Scream, number one. Scout Comics with Black Demon Tales, Descent, number one. Let's see if this... You know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, hopefully, you know, hopefully, hopefully you'll find print there. Well, Antarctica number 10. That's an interesting story. See, it's, it, it's got all the boxes checked off of it, but that's fine. Because it's an interesting story. But yeah, I mean, it's like. I'm not really into it. I've only picked up a couple of issues on it yeah, through my digital pirate chest, of course. I haven't spent any money on that. No. Um, Scout Comics, number one, The Dusk. Was this solicited last week? As well? Did, did, did we say that? Well, we'll put a pin in that one. Gold Diggers, War Mistresses of Mars. Ooh. Ah, see, Blue Beetle. Like, what was I saying? This is the Blue Beetle. You know, it's, it's published in Spanish as well. I was just saying that at the, at the top of the show about, like, and it's still got the Dawn of DC trade dress, which is probably coming off right after um, the Absolute Power thing. But, yeah, I mean, that's the, there you go. I wonder how well that sells and where. That would be interesting, but they don't, you know. DC wouldn't share those numbers with us, the fans, anymore. Maybe it's because the fans kind of weaponized the, you know, the data and use, you know, and is using them as hallmarks of failure. And um, maybe misrepresenting their own, you know, ledger reports, or maybe just want to, they could just simply be wanting to Keep it internal and not like, hey, maybe the big corporate, maybe the, the shareholders, if they caught wind of this, would be in a bit more trouble. And that's it. That's it for this week of new comic books to preview here on this Wednesday, this new comic book day. So what is going to, how many comics are going to be in my poll list this week? Let's look. We've got zero. Zero, 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 one. Sacrificers, return. Got sacrificers. Um, Neil before Zod will be in my poll. And I will pick up Last Mermaid off of the, off of the, the shelf if and when it's there. Maybe Scooby Doo Batman if it's there. So it would be a good week to pick up some some bags and boards and some boxes if I needed them. I'm all I'm all caught up on supplies right now. So because it's so it's a short week. I'm only looking like am I only buying four floppies this week? I could be. It could be like a $22 day. But I'd like to be part of like helping keeping my local comic book shop open. I'm weird like that. I will I will agree to pay the retail markup. I get my boards, I get my bags, and I get my boxes at my local comic book shop, my LCS. Because why? I could be saving a bundle um 
if I use my online supply chain, sure. But how does that help the, the, this, the American way? Truth, justice in the American way. Hello, Superman. Do, 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 do. Boop, 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 boop. Superman. You know Superman. <laughs> but the American way, and part of the American way really is uh, choosing, making the conscious choice to choose local businesses over convenience of big box and an online supply chain. I use my online supply supply chain for everything. And I need to be able to use that in more appropriate American local business places. You know, comic book shops are independent bookstores. They are. I mean, they have more than comic books. They got back issues and they've got, they should have shelves of books, prose books, illustrated books, just books, 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 pages, paper. They got to be treated nicely, kept out of the sunlight, away from fire, away from water. They're such precious things. You know, they're, they're flimsy. They're, 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 they're gossamer. They're, they, they can be, they, I mean, we got to take good care of these things. They're paper. These are paper people. They tear and rip very easily. Be kind. Maybe we should treat each other better, better than the way we treat these paper people who do rip and tear so very easily. Thank you so very much for, for tuning in and sharing some, some minutes of your day. Is there anything on your show notes, Pikachu? Let's see. No, Wednesday is just, you know, you said free for all. Okie dokie. Never before have I turned on you and you look too good to me. You may be eyeing it to cut me in two and I just can't let you be. Well, it's a free for all and a high and down and you can't set your life. The sticks are high and so am I. It's in the air tonight. Ow! It's a free for all. Now that's free for all by Ted Nugent. Uh, he was a rock star. <laughs> what he did, you literally, you can't do, uh, you can't do that anymore. Anyway, was it right in the first place? And um, comics don't need rock stars. They don't. Comics needs teammates, good teams, pitchers, catchers, shortstops, first base, second base. You know, the list goes on and on. Comics is better, you know, I think better visioned as a baseball team than a rock band. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're finding this show through the Incel Cast, do that as well. Turn on those notifications. We do this twice a week on Wednesdays, 4 p.m. U.S. Eastern, pre-recorded before a, before a live studio audience of my stuffed animals. Um, and then Sundays, we usually do a live stream. I couldn't do that on Easter Sunday because it was Easter Sunday. And I needed to, you know, that's where it's what we call work-life balance. But usually Sundays, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern, we do a live stream. And it's really fun. And um, um, I love connecting with the viewers. And we have... We have these comic book shop style conversations. Like the comic book shop is so important to me. It's the fulcrum of our culture as geeks. Well, it was in the 20th century and it still has a place in our lives. Now we have social media and we have YouTube, which has really brought a lot of things together. It's been like a parallel comic book shop to talk in. But uh, the spirit of that, the spirit of the comic book shop style conversation Let's embrace it here. In the comic book shops, we I never, never encountered any kind of you know, any volumes of acrimony or outrage or even put downs. It's how you experience it out here on X, on Twitter, and on YouTube. 
um, because you're not in arm's reach. <laughs> I'm from South, I'm from the South Boston projects. Come on, we invented. Did you have it coming, you know. <laughs> well, thank you so very much for tuning in today. Um, God bless. Namaste. Good luck. Tune in to the Comic Talk with Reverend Sully and the Incel Cast, the Midtown Morning Show, the, at your dojo for tactical and practical spirituality. Seriously. Um, thank you so very much. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. And we will see you again in those funny pages. Ciao. Bye-bye. All right. You got it, Pika?